it's blue. We added like tons of these crystals to Pyro One. Um, we've used crystals before on Wala, um, but I think we were a bit too, um, yeah, we played it a bit too safe on Wala. I think we only put like crystals as ground cover assets. Um, but for Pyro One, we really wanted to push the shapes. Um, so you can find like these really large crystals here. Heisenberg would be really happy here. Okay, then another interesting thing to highlight here, plants over there. So what's interesting about those is we made them like three or four years ago. Um, they were supposed to be uh, part of like a mission in, uh, on a space station. The mission was scrapped, um, unfortunately. Um, and ever since then, the, this asset set has just been sitting in our like vault. Uh, it's a really cool plant set and I'm happy that we finally found uh, a spot to use them. So this is another spot I want to highlight. Um, it's also important for us that we do add something memorable to each planet. Um, in the case of Pyro 1, it's this spiky rock set that looks really intimidating. We try to push the scale of the assets for the Pyro system. We felt like by now we got like the, the basic rocks and the scattering of the basic rocks to like a very good quality. So now we can explore more crazy shapes, I guess. And this is one of the sets that we made. Um, it's not done yet. It still needs a polish pass, but I wanted to show you guys what it feels like when you're in game walking around here. Now I want to show you my personal favorite biome of Pyro 1. It's this biome here, which has these really cool looking rock formations. They are massive in scale. Like if I jump in game here, you get a good feeling for the scale of them. Yeah, it's possible to land your spaceship on them. Um, it's probably really fun to yeah, race through here. We can Imagine that this is going to be like a nice combat space as well because they do provide nice, nice cover. Let's just jump to a couple different areas on Pyro 1 before we move to Pyro 2. So now we're on Pyro 2. Um, in comparison to Pyro 1, you can immediately see the planet is like way more colorful. There's more variation in uh, the use and values of the colors. Um, we have like browns and um, like bone white spots, some red, uh, and it's all contrasted by like a blue clear ocean. So Pyro 2 doesn't have volumetric clouds yet, but they will be there at release. So now I jump to um, one of the biomes of Pyro 2. What I want to highlight here is the improvements that we made to how assets spawn on the side of mountains. That was something that was always quite challenging for us to do, to have some natural transition from the terrain to the geometry, and then also have like the rocks form in a natural way. Um, now we can make nicer rock formations. It's not quite there yet. Um, there are still improvements planned for it, but I think in comparison to what we had before, um, this is a big step forward. Also, what you might see is the drawing distance of assets has been greatly improved. So everything you see here in the distance is actual geometry. So if we were to fly all the way over there, you would, you will see that this is, um, yeah, like cliff formations. I think it looks really cool, like the, the silhouette of the terrain. Yeah, let's fly through the canyons. Yeah, I would do this in a spaceship, but I'm horrible at flying. So I'm just going to use uh, the camera in editor. So now I jumped ahead to a really cool biome on Pyro 2. Um, it's simple, but I think sometimes less is more. Uh, in this case, what sets this biome apart from the rest of the planet is that we added these calcified trees. Um, and they spawn in very dense clusters. Um, so you almost get like little forests of them. So it's supposed to look very dry and kind of dead, but still 
uh, in a pretty way. Okay, if we look at it from this angle, what I really like about this biome is um, the contrast that you have um, here on the terrain. It's pale, it's dry, but then in the background you have like the nice clear blue ocean. So this is one of the red areas on Pyro 2. Um, it's kind of like a sandy desert, but we try to add like a lot of different um, geology assets, um, different mixes of bushes and grasses. Uh, so it's not like a, a dead desert, but it feels kind of lively. Um, and you find like lots of foliage here. We have like these cliffs in the background, which are pretty dark. Um, and it's another nice contrast of this planet where you have like the saturated red terrain um, and the dark bedrock. So jumping to this point here, what I want to highlight is the improvements that we made to our ground textures. So previously, like two or three years ago, uh, we had to rely a lot on uh, ground cover assets to add um, geometry and detail that the ground textures alone couldn't give us. Um, but ever since we got terrain displacement, we get like really nice uh, shapes just from the textures alone. And then if you if you combine it with ground cover assets, yeah, the, the result is really successful, how things blend together and the amount of detail that you see on the ground. So now we're on Pyro 3. You saw some of it during last year's keynote demo, um, but I want to use the opportunity to give you like an in-depth look at some of the biomes. So last year you saw that like yellow is kind of the, the accent color of Pyro 3. Um, so from this distance, you can see through the volumetric clouds, like a lot of the yellow coming through. We talked about what's making it look yellow, which is the moss. And I want to like jump down to the planet surface and show you the amount of detail that you will see when uh, going up close to the moss. So we're down at the surface now. I'm just going to jump in game. A lot of time and effort was spent on making the moss look just right. So like the right level of fluffiness um, and density. So it looks really nice when it like covers these rocks. Um, and then we also have like lots of smaller moss on the ground. Um, we combine it with like yellow grass uh, and it makes for like a really interesting biome. So it was really important for us to make this biome look really dense. Um, so we pushed the amount of acids that we're using so it's basically completely covered in foliage. Compared to Hurston, for example, which Hurston and Microtech, which are probably our densest planets when it comes to foliage, um, this is way denser. Um, the good thing is that we don't have any trees here. So all the budget we can use on ground cover, on grass. Now we jump to a pyro coast biome. The improvements we got to the coast biomes is that we can now use a OPR override for every single biome. Previously, we could only use one global override per planet, which as you can imagine is not enough when you have something like Stanton 4, where you have snowy regions and the spruce tree regions and one object preset just can't cover every coast. We added these coral, um, this like coral geology set um, to have some of the yellow also along the coast. Um, so you see here, we always have like a little bit of yellow coming through uh, and eventually it transitions into the nice mossy areas. Previously, when we made coast object presets, we played it a bit safe and only used one or two asset sets. Um, but due to the fact that we can now push the density along the coast as well, you can find different kinds of coral, um, seaweed, uh, different pebbles and rocks and other stuff. Now I jump to one of the volcanic regions on Pyro 3. Um, you might not expect to find vegetation here, um, but we did add a little bit of vegetation to this region to make it a bit more interesting. What I want to highlight here is the quality bar that we set for ourselves when it comes to improving the look of our vegetation. So this is one of my favorite new vegetation sets that we created you can see the amount of detail on display here. We have like nice little flowers and these like 
knots or whatever, like pots. Um, and it's just like a really cool asset set. So when flying over the volcanic regions, you will find pockets of these uh, scattered all around just to make the area like a little bit more lively. Before we move on, let's jump around to a couple more places. Now we're on Pyro 4, which is my personal favorite of the Pyro system. Yeah, just full disclosure, you can probably tell that the clouds here are not done yet. They do look a bit busted, but yeah, they will be, they will look amazing once the planet comes out. So let's focus on the terrain shapes. We created some of these terrain shapes special for Pyro 4 because it's loosely inspired by like Scottish highlands. Um, so there's not a lot of like verticality. Uh, not a lot of trees, so everything is kind of coming from the terrain and from the smaller assets that we scatter on the terrain geometry. So jumping in game and then you can see the amount of ground cover assets on display, um, the variation in color, but it's all grounded by like the, the color of the soil um, and it just looks like we have multiple new vegetation sets on display here. So first of all, we have this um, bush set here, which is called, um, I think it's called a fire stalk, which, yeah, it's kind of like a modified version of the real world thing. They add like a little bit of color to the area um, and make things pop. Then we have these ones here. I forgot the name of the asset set. Yeah, they also look quite saturated um, and interesting. We also try to improve the quality of our tree sets. If you if you compare like the trees that we have on Hurston to these ones, um, the geometry count is way higher. The texture resolution is a bit higher um, and they just look more polished and nicer, which means that eventually we have to go back to Hurston to Microtech and give the trees there like a little makeover. So what was really important for us was to improve the blending between different biomes. So you see here, these are two fairly simple biomes. There's a clear distinction between them, but the transition still feels very natural. So if we go down here, you have like the red grass and it kind of feathers out. Yeah, it feels very organic and natural. Let's jump to the most experimental biome that we've made so far. So for this biome here, the concept art team gave us um, some really interesting concept art because this is easily some of the, the biggest uh, rock formations that we have in the game so far. Actually, let me try to fly a ship so you can see the scale of them. So they're massive in scale. And what was the hardest part about getting these uh, to look right is that they're supposed to look really good from a distance um, because you would expect something this big um, yeah, to be visible almost from space. Um, but then the tricky thing is also to make them look good um, when you're standing up close to them. Let me jump in game so you see how big these rocks actually are. So they are massive in scale um, you can probably land your spaceship on them and walk on them and they make you feel like really small. But I think it's, it's a really good visual that you have these like dark gray rocks against the, the crimson of the soil and the grass. So here's a little happy accident where we have the volumetric clouds uh, covering the terrain. And because the, the height map, the, the difference in height um, is so large, we actually get like shapes of the terrain poking out of the volumetric clouds. Yeah, you can probably spot some of the tiling issues that we have here, uh, which is something that we still need to look at. But like I said before, uh, this is still work in progress. Um, so it's gonna change a bit. Because I mentioned biome diversity along the coasts before, uh, I just wanted to highlight what one of the coast biomes on Pyro 4 looks like. So this one is kind of this wet sand. Um, we scattered some of the seaweed 
some of these um, yeah, lava plates uh, and some of these pebbles. And then we also get like nice seaweed uh, moving with the waves of the ocean. One interesting thing on Pyro 4 is that we have a massive crater region. On other planets we have individual craters which are a whole height map or like three, four smaller craters on one height map. But this is actually multiple height maps forming one large crater. Um, and you can see it all the way out in space. Like this whole region is one big crater. So it's a mix of like the global displacement uh, texture and then the height maps of the ecosystems um, spawning on top. Plus the volumetric clouds uh, make it look really epic here. Now we've flown down to the surface of the crater. Um, we wanted this to feel very yes, yeah, sp spooky and grim and kind of dark. So we have these um, dark fantasy forest looking trees, uh, yeah, which look kind of creepy. Uh, then we bring some of the red grass back from the previous um, biome. If we go down to the surface of the crater, you can see that we added this dark forest looking tree set, some creepy shapes, um, some moist looking ground cover assets. And this whole area is supposed to make you feel a bit uneasy. It's supposed to be hostile and it's not safe without your suit on. So far we looked at four of the pyro planets. So let's switch it up and look at one of the moons. This one is Pyro 5C. Similar to Pyro 4, you can see that it has a landmark that you can see from space. In this case, it's not a crater, but it's like, yeah, like a long streak of um, slick obsidian. So let's fly down to the surface of the streak and have a look what it looks like from up close. Again, uh, we start with like the global height map where um, there's, there's like a, a little bit of a bump up and then it goes down to form um, the crack and then we scatter um, the ecosystem uh, height maps on top to get the look that we want. So if we go down here, you can see we start with like flatland shapes, some smaller craters, and then uh, it transitions into like these quite spiky looking uh, rock forma uh, mountain formations and then down here they feather into like these longer ridges of bedrock before it becomes smooth down here and if we jump to this point which is a really cool spot because like the sun just hits the obsidian in the right way and everything looks like nice and shiny um, you can see here that the ground looks quite different from other planets. So instead of soil, it's, it's yeah, it, it almost looks artificial in a way. Acid-wise, we're using one of our obsidian sets that you can also find on Stanton 4. Um, this one got a bit of an update, a bit of polish. Uh, so we improved the shapes, uh, different textures, just to make it look extra cool like the way the sunlight uh, hits um, these surfaces. To make this area a bit more interesting, we decided to add some of these white uh, light gray shrubs just so the area doesn't feel too samey. And it's always nice to have like the occasional pocket of vegetation. To set the obsidian biome apart from the rest of the planet, we went with the opposite route for these biomes here. So instead of being uh, shiny and slick, they are more dry, um, covered in dry sand. Um, the vegetation is dry. We added some of these spiky shapes to add some verticality to the scattering. But yeah, outside the obsidian crack, this is what you will find on the planet most of the time. So this go-to point I picked to show some of the subtle color that we added to Pyro 5C. So the obsidian crack is like kind of just dark gray, black. Um, the desert I just showed is also light gray, 
So we felt this needed a bit, uh, a bit of a color breakup. So we added some of these red hues to uh, the occasional biome. It's very rocky. You also find the, the red sand on the rocks from the biome accumulation. And it looks really nice how, how the red uh, creeps up into the crevices of the height maps in the background. We're going to end our showcase today on Pyro 6. Pyro 6 has a very interesting color palette. Like I really like the yellows and the pale um, beige tones of the terrain. And then you have another blue ocean. Um, as you can see, the terrain is kind of uh, ridden by craters. And we get these really cool shapes where the ocean fills in those craters. If we jump all the way down to the edge of one of those craters. Um, so now we're at the edge of one of those craters. I'm jumping in game right now just to show you what it feels like walking along here. Um, you can see that we added some dramatic looking uh, coral shapes and then eventually you walk down here towards one of those craters that's filled with water. We have a couple of floating meshes here on the left. Um, this is still work in progress. So uh, one of us, probably me, has to go in and uh, yeah, adjust the settings of the spawning here. And then we're right at the edge. And I really like the, the color of the water and how it looks against the, the backdrop of the white chalky terrain. Then over here, I want to introduce you to our human scale ref mesh. Uh, his name is Rüdiger um, and he's super helpful when we set up object presets because you can immediately see how the scale of assets feel um, when you have him in situation, like he adds context to the, to the scene. He spawns every time that object preset spawns and yeah, he helps us um, find the right values uh, when it comes to the scale of our assets. In general, this biome here is another good example of how our ground textures work together with the assets that we put on top. So the transition is really nice from this ground texture to this one. Um, and then we have like the same rock set on both of them. Uh, and it makes for like a nice amount of detail on the ground. Then occasionally we spawn some of these spider looking um, ground cover meshes. So this spot here is really nice because you get like the particles, um, the monochromatic terrain, the acids, um, and it's all against the backdrop of the skybox of the pyro system, which is red. Then we get like some really cool looking sunbeams coming through the uh, the volumetric clouds here and then if I turn the sun and we make this uh, dark and I jump in game you can see how drastically the the skybox impacts the lighting um, when you're on the dark side of the planet and the skybox is just, yeah, it looks, it looks really good. So this is the skybox for the entire pyro system. So you will see it um, on every single pyro planet. It's just that pyro six has like a very thin atmosphere. So you see it well here. I'm happy to have had this opportunity to show you guys the work that we did in the last two years. Uh, I'm super excited to see you guys explore the pyro system for the first time to hear your feedback. Um, there's still work that we have to do, um, but I hope that you are even more excited than before after seeing what I showed you today.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a well, he's a game developer, a founder, a CEO. He, he, he made his first game when he was like 15. Anyway, uh, he was sitting in my chair, and uh, he's left. He, I don't know where he went, but he should not be let back in the building. Yeah, black shirt, jeans. Yeah, just keep him out of the building because he sat in my chair. All right, thanks. When are we live? Hi, welcome back to CitizenCon 